We're going to drive through the French Alps, then head west, crossing the Pyrenees into northern Spain, hugging the coast all the way to Santiago de Compostela, then head south through Portugal, crossing back into Spain. From here, we cross the Gibraltar Straits into Morocco, first the Rift Mountains, Middle Atlas Mountains, then the High Atlas Mountains, before heading to the coast road, heading north back to Europe, and finally touring southern Spain before returning through France. Along the way, we're going to be doing what we love most, adventuring including mountain biking, hiking, hopefully even learn to surf, as well as the usual sightseeing. Why not join us on our adventure? Finally, we're off after a hectic period of prepping for a potential nine-month trip in a 20-year-old van. Matt has spent most of the winter upgrading the van with such things as lithium batteries and UV water filtration, as well as the usual mechanicals. After suffering with Lyme disease for the past two and a half years and only just recovering, I've had a hectic work schedule as well as having to prepare my house to rent. We've always wanted a big camper van trip and the last few years have taught us that life is too short. Also, Matt's 50th birthday is approaching. Due to Brexit, we're only allowed 90 days in Europe, hence the Moroccan excursion to extend our trip. But it's not that straightforward. We'll come back to that in a later episode. When we have the time, we usually avoid the French toll roads, which can save a considerable amount of money, not just in tolls, but cheaper fuel and driving at more fuel economic speeds on routes which also let you see more of rural France. After a couple of days of driving through the French heat wave, Lake Annecy was a welcome sight and we couldn't resist a quick dip. We were even treated to an air show which seemed quite fitting after having recently watched Top Gun Maverick. Whilst in the Free Valleys area of the Alps, we managed to catch up with an old friend of Matt's who he'd not seen for 20 years. She recommended a Via Ferrata to get started. We also went to the Meribel Bike Park, which was a rare opportunity to get an, a bike uplift, as we normally choose to visit the Alps when the bike parks are closed. From here we headed further south into the Alps, spending the night on a high mountain pass followed by a sunrise walk before heading to Alpe d'Huez where we celebrated Matt's 50th birthday, check out that white tie, by riding the famous Mega Avalanche route, a descent from the summit of Pic Blanc at 3,300 metres. Just on the other side of Peak Blank, we chose to repeat one of our favourite rides in the area due to its stunning scenery and its really wild feel. First we climbed for 1300 metres, including a two hour hiker bike section. However, our efforts are rewarded by an awesome flow trail descent which just goes on and on. Le Grave is always a good stopover with a free park up and cracking views of the mountains towering over the town. A great place to start some of our hiking and biking routes. We'd driven past this valley so many times and finally had the time to explore it. It's only accessible by foot so we put on our walking boots, only too happy to have a rest from the bikes. We were delighted to find the valley was full of marmots who weren't camera shy and got really close. Such a pity we didn't bring our own marmot with us. took us really close to some glaciers which sadly were rapidly melting from the long hot summer.
On our descent, it was a relief to see some rain, desperately needed by the parched mountains. The Kera Statra Park is one of our favourite areas in the Alps. After spending the morning on a short ride, the best way to keep cool was to do a simple via ferrata in the gorge right below the chateau. We spent a few days on this free park up and used it as a base for several rides and also a good place to catch up on some van maintenance and cleaning. This stunning valley climb was the start of a really memorable ride. After meeting a couple of hardcore mountain bikers from the Bavarian mountains of Germany who knew the area quite well, they recommended this ride with an uplift bus from the valley to the col on the Italian border at a height of 2,774 metres. Unfortunately, the uplift service was no longer running, but we couldn't resist and chose to ride up climbing even higher above the col, which made the route 47 kilometres long with a height gain of 1,600 metres. Quite committing, especially at that altitude when you're gasping for oxygen on every breath. This descent turned out to be my favourite of the trip so far. Steep switchbacks to start with, a good opportunity to practice my corner hops. Quickly the trail turns into a flow section to the first of two lakes. Always good to get off the brakes and let it roll. Pump the undulations wherever possible to maintain the speed. However, sometimes you get unlucky with the timings of sheep herds passing through. Arguably a welcome break from the Tech Festo. This is what I love about natural trails. Coming around the corner and not knowing what's coming up, whether it's even rideable, and being able to pick the best line through a jumble of rocks without stopping. At the bottom of this section, there was about 15 walkers who had been watching me and gave a round of applause after clearing the rocks. It doesn't happen very often. After this, everything felt easy. Speed and confidence increased all the way back to the van.
French mountain biker recommended this route to us and described it as a French classic, so we had to try it. The route climbed very steeply to a col, so steep we had to push and carry the bikes. The route then crossed a steep ridge with an ancient observatory on the top which had stunning views across the whole of the Keras Mountains. The ridge took us to another col named Col Fromage, then we descended on a superb single track all the way back to the start. Definitely one of my favourite rides in the area, so thank you Frenchman for the recommendation. We've had an amazing time in the French Alps and we are sad to leave, but we have so much more to explore ahead of us. So we head southwest towards northern Spain, stopping to see family on the way. The holiday is over, the adventure begins.